Hi, welcome back. We are, I'm Marquita. And I'm Tom. And we are destined to explore. And if you've been following along with us, we, in our last episode, which was episode 12 of our journey, we were in White Sands, New Mexico. So, we have left White Sands on the next leg of our adventure. And um, where are we headed? Uh, we're heading to Carl's Dead Caverns and uh, Roswell, New Mexico. And what's so fascinating about Roswell? Uh, Roswell is uh, kind of the center of the universe for alien activity. I expected Roswell to be a real freak show. And um, I've kind of remembered it that way, but I misremembered it. Yeah, but it's it's Roswell is actually a very nice little town. Um, you know, they do have their UFO museum there, which was which we went through and was wish I wish we'd have more time to spend there. We didn't have a lot of time because we get there kind of late in the day. Um, but it was kind of fascinating to go through and just read a lot of the eyewitness accounts to the mm -hmm. UFO um, that they had there. Um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of um, prominent and respectable people who had um, witness accounts of different aspects of that event. So that was um, that was quite interesting to see. Yeah, I, I think what's what's fascinating is current events. Mm -hmm. You know, the government is opening up. Um, a little more about that. Right, about what really did happen. And I think you go in there expecting sort of a joke, especially because they have little displays you can see here of of aliens, aliens yeah. with their with their spaceship. And there's the displays kind of look a little cheesy or or as a joke, I guess I shouldn't say that because I don't think they meant it to look that way. The stories that reputable military people told mm. it's hard not to believe and yeah. i don't know what that means mm -hmm. um but there are accounts that that agree with each other people who did not know each other mm -hmm. and sort of the c conspiracy to cover it up i was skeptical but i'm yeah. not so skeptical anymore yeah. i don't know what to believe about it but it was super fascinating so on every block there's a spaceship and a martian but um not not a, i mean there's i mean realistically i mean there's it, there's like a block or a block and a half of things that are kind of related to that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, the rest of the town is very normal. Kind of like a normal town. Yeah. yeah. And but a nice, they, nice little town. Too. Yeah. But Roswell definitely is a place to go. And I would highly recommend you save some time to go through that uh, UFO museum. Yeah. I'd say at least, I'd say a couple hours couple if you hours, want to read yeah. this stuff. Because yeah. it's very fascinating. So... Absolutely. Uh, Roswell was a place worth worthwhile going. Yeah. So we took off from um, Roswell and headed to the Chosa BLM land mm -hmm. right outside of Carlsbad, New Mexico. Chosa is, you know, just off the main highway, like some of the other BLM areas we've been in, a gr big rough gravel parking lot. The view that we had out our windows is a wide open expanse. So it, you know, it's one of these places where while there were other people around, it felt like we were there alone. We, we parked there so we could go to Carlsbad Caverns the next morning. Yeah, so Carlsbad is another national park. If you get there, I think it's after the end of May, you can go in the evening and you can watch the bats come out of uh, Carlsbad Cavern. We were there too early to be able to see that. And I've been there a couple of times. Um, I still think it's fascinating, but mm -hmm. you had kind of a different take. The, the most impressive thing about Carlsbad is how big it is, mm -hmm. how big of a cavern it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, and I don't know because it's been a long time since I've been in a cavern, but I think there's been, I've been in more caverns that seem to be more ornamental or more spectacular as far as the formations. More, more impressive stalactites and stalagmites, yeah. I think, and more. But, grow but I mean, I mean, it's just, just the massive size of the caverns and how far down into the ground it goes. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's a number of areas where you can see off into areas where the cavern goes much farther that you can't get to. Um, including above you and below you and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, that was kind of interesting just to see and kind of wonder how, how big is that thing really? I suppose somebody's probably mapped it out, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma City. And you might ask why we're on our way to Oklahoma City. 
is why would you go to Oklahoma City? Because it's on the way. Because it's on the way. So what we haven't said is that we are on the last leg of our inaugural epic Southwest tour, tour yeah. that we started in late September and now it's early April and we are now wrapping it up and heading back to our home in Minnesota. But we had some family business that we needed to take care of in northern Oklahoma and so we kind of, it routes us through Oklahoma City. So, uh, we have a long day. How long have we been driving today? Well, we left about 9 o'clock this morning and we're going to get there about 6.30 and I guess we lost an hour because we moved from Mountain Time to Central Time. Yeah. So I don't know what that comes out I to. I don't know. But it's, it's a lot of a lot of hours. Yeah, a lot of miles. A lot of miles. A lot of hours. <clears throat> uh, we normally don't drive more than about three hours when we're hauling, but we just wanted to haul. So we are about uh, 30 minutes out of Oklahoma City now, and um, we are going to do something there that we have not done before. So why don't you uh, describe Harvest Hosts? Yep. So Harvest Hosts is. Um, Businesses, typically, you know, wineries, golf courses, restaurants, um, pretty much anybody that's got like a large parking area, and they provide a spot for you to park for the night um, with no hookups, no connections, or anything like that. Um, the one caveat is, is they um, kind of request that you um, patronize that facility. So if it's a restaurant, um, we'll, you know, you get dinner there. That's what we're going to do because we've had a long day in the road. Don't want to try and mess up things in the and the rig and make dinner and have to clean all that up so that's really a perfect opportunity for us to to pull in get get ourselves a meal and um, be ready to go early in the morning again tomorrow harvest host is typically a one night deal yeah um, where you stay there yeah so it's good for when you've got a day like this when you've got a long travel day and you're only spending one or two nights in some place so um we are going to go to thunder um Thunder something cafe. We're, we're going to the Thunder Road Cafe. Thunder Road Cafe, in, out, just outside of Oklahoma City. That's where we're going to be parked for the night and where we're going to eat dinner. Yep. So we'll share with you our experience both uh, boondocking there and also what looks to be some yummy food that's really a good price. Yeah, yeah. So we will uh, get share with you more later. So our first harvest holes. Yes. What are your impressions? So it's it's interesting. All right, I would say. <laughs> We're at the Thunder Roadhouse, uh, right outside, of, uh, well, in the, off the highway uh, in uh, Oklahoma City. Okay. So, so normally when you think about a harvest host, you think about a winery or a farm out in the country or maybe a golf course that's pretty far out there. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a restaurant mm -hmm. and it's in a little more of an urban setting, I would say. Oh yeah. <laughs> can you hear the urban setting? Yeah, I'm sure you can. So, um, let's let's show you the space so let's talk about that so this is the truck we have this huge parking lot that is completely nobody but us here easy access to get into this place yep. a gas station right next door and the restaurant is right there this is the back of the restaurant so um it this was definitely bar food and let me just explain something. So we took it to go because when we went into the restaurant to patronize them in gratitude for letting us stay here, mm -hmm. the place was full of smoke. Most of the people were smoking in there and I was really surprised, so. Yeah, apparently because they have gambling, um, you can bet on horse races and things there. Apparently because you have gambling, you can have smoking. No, and it was overwhelming. So we decided we still want to patronize them, but we took it to go and we ate in the comfort of our camper in fresh air. Yep. It's basic bar food. It's not gourmet by any st stretch. We were starving, so we would have eaten our own shoes at yep. this point. Yeah. So um, I, I would say on a scale of one to 10, one being it's a cra crappy experience, 10 being fantastic, I would give it a four. That's where I was going to go. Before. Yeah. yeah. For the, the pluses again are easy access off the freeway, uh, lots of space, friendly people, mm -hmm. um, and easy getting back on and close to gas. That, and, those are good things. And, and pretty much we're just looking for a place to lay our heads tonight. Right. And, so. Right. Downside, traffic noise. We're going to have to have earplugs in tonight. Um, and the food was mediocre and the atmosphere in the restaurant was 
well, 1970s. Well, we didn't stay very long, so it's hard to tell. Well, I would just say the smell in the restaurant yeah. in the 1970s. So, okay, so that's that's our adventure for today outside of Oklahoma City. Tomorrow we will be uh, a short trip, thank goodness, a couple hours to um, northern Oklahoma, and we'll check in there about what we find at our family farm. Talk to you then. We are on our way back home and we were going to stop on the way home uh, at our family farm to take care of some business. I did not expect to do much filming at the farm because it was just going to be a quick get in and take care of some stuff. Basically we had a renter moving out at the farm and we wanted to kind of make sure things were going as they should be here and ready for the next phase of our uh, life here with the with the farm ownership so um, didn't plan to make any kind of video about this because it's just kind of business stuff but um, we've had an interesting experience so far and wanted to share maybe a little bit uh, with you as well so I'm gonna go outside and share with you uh, just some uh, conversation with Tom about what we've what we've ha what has happened here in the last couple of days so let me just shut the door here So we are parked on the farm. Uh, you can see our rig here. And we have been basically here for, we got here Wednesday and this is now Sunday. So that's, this is our fourth day here. And our, as I said, we're, we were planning on kind of cleaning up and getting rid of things and preparing, quite frankly, we're preparing the, the, the property for, um, for sale. And, so it was not in the best condition. It wasn't horrible, but it was messy when we got here. So we spent a couple of days uh, cleaning up both the yard. This is the, the yard um, in front of the house and getting rid of a lot of junk that the, that the renters left. They, I'll show you the fire pit in a minute, but it was full of stuff that they just left for us. And we also had some cleanup to do in the house and some cleanup to do in the barn. So instead of like taking care of their crap, <clears throat> not surprisingly, they just dumped it in a hole in the ground. And we've got tricycles and garbage and a teddy bear and um, potatoes. A, potatoes. There's a coolers, there's a Hoover vacuum. Um, and the thing that's most disgusting is that most of the stuff is in really good condition. I mean, it looks like it is. Here's the couch they decided they didn't want anymore, so they just dumped it. Garbage, dumped it. The couch doesn't look like it's horrible. That's what I'm saying. I mean, this stuff, you could probably give it away or something. Oh, and the baby stroller, that's always touching. Here, let's dump the baby stroller. So this is stuff we are left to get rid of. So we spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how to get rid of all that garbage that was in the hole and to include trying to figure out how to get it hauled to a landfill, how to get it picked up, dump, uh, have a dumpster delivered, have uh, hire somebody to haul it off. And we discovered that being out in the rural countryside, there were not as many things as we're used to having readily available to us in the city. So one of our neighbor farmers said, when they have uh, garbage like this, they just burn it. So we weren't really thrilled about doing that, but we really had no other alternative um, because we had no way to haul this stuff off or no place to take it. So um, Tom started with what he thought was going to be a controlled burn, and uh, this is what the result was. So um, not completely uh, as tame as we thought it was going to be, but certainly it got rid of all the stuff. Turns out we did many burns uh, throughout the time that we were there because there was so much stuff to get rid of. Well, we've had another adventure in our trip heading back home. We have uh, stopped at our family farm and we've been here for a couple of days. And as we were doing some chores around the farm, um, the truck 
um, this, uh, the power steering and the power brakes went out and some kind of alarm or alert came on saying uh, the warning that it could stall. So we are currently 40 miles from the dealership and it wasn't safe to um, drive it because gosh it could stall or something. So they sent a tow truck out here to haul our sweet onyx away. Um, and it, literally it's gonna be 45 miles from here <laughs> to the dealership. And you'll, you'll notice that here's Pearl, our lovely little home. And you'll notice here's the rest of the farm. And other than the tow truck, there's no other vehicles here because we're the only ones here. So we um, think we have some local friends that are gonna come to the rescue. It is currently Friday night and the car rental dealership, well, first of all, the dealership didn't have a car for us, so they should, because this is a new truck. Um, but then the only car rental place in Ponca City, which is where the truck is being towed, is um, an enterprise, and it's closed and not open until Monday morning at 10 a.m. So we, in essence, but for the f grace of uh, local friends, have no transportation between now and whenever this truck gets fixed um, unless we get a rental. So we think our friends Rod and uh, Diana are loaning us a pickup for the weekend and then we'll also be able to drive it down to Ponca City uh, on Monday to either get a vehicle from the dealer or hopefully get something from Enterprise. But this guy here, this towing guy says, they hardly ever have any cars at Enterprise. <laughs> Welcome to the country. So that's us. We're um, currently stranded until we have um, our friends come. So the adventure continues. So we came here, you know, planning to come in, get our cleanup done, and then get the heck out of here. Mm -hmm. Rod Reese and his wife Diana, you know, of course, we've got a little bit of connection to them because they are, they farm some of the land here and graze some cattle on the pasture land. So it's not, you know, really surprising that we would would get to know them or see them, but um, they've just been so, you know, so amazingly friendly and kind to us. And mm -hmm. like you said, it's not surprising, but it's still heartwarming. As I showed you video earlier of our truck getting towed because the power steering and power brakes went out. And, um, you know, we had no, we had met Rod and D Diana the day before. And um, briefly. briefly, they came over just to see. And they, again, we had, the family has a long time relationship with them, but we had never met them before. And that morning, one of the issues here at the farm was that um, the, the well wasn't working. So there was no running water in the house. We have it in our rig, but not in the house. And so as soon as they knew we had a problem. Yeah, they, just, they just showed up with a trailer with a huge 55 gallon drum or 50 gallon drum filled yeah. with water on it. So that drum over there. Yeah, just showed up and dropped it off for us. We didn't ask them to bring it. Um, in fact, we, I think we, I'm pretty sure we told them a couple of times that we're fine, we got all the water we need, right. but, they, but they did it. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So when we're sitting here with the truck being towed, um, the only thing I could think of was calling um, Rod and Diana and saying, hey, <laughs> could you loan us a car? Because the yeah. the truck, the dealership yeah, we, wouldn't lend us one. We, hard, we hardly know you, but you right. know, can you give us a car? Right. And so they immediately came over and, and gave us a truck to use for as long as we need it. Mm -hmm. um, then, within probably an hour or two, I got a text from a woman that I had met again the day before, never knew him before. They had just come out to take a look at the property, and she texts me and, and says, says, gosh, did I just see your truck getting towed through town? <laughs> Small town. And I said to I said to Marquita, I said, what are they going to do, offer us a car next? And that's what they that's did. That's what they did. She said, she said, well, do you need a car? She said, because I just don't want you to be stranded out there. We've experienced the country life that mm -hmm. people are just friendly mm -hmm. and helpful, taking care of neighbors and, and even mm -hmm. strangers. Mm -hmm. And it's been wonderful. Plus, mm -hmm. we've kind of really enjoyed this place. Yeah. Um, we, it's, we, both, we both said this morning, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind staying longer. Right. So I don't know what that what that's going to look like or if that's going to turn out or not. But um, a lot of it depends on what happens with the yeah. truck.
but I mean, if the truck, you know, if they have to order parts for the truck and we don't get it back for a week or whatever, we're not going to be sad. No, we're 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 liking it here. It's so peaceful. You and can see the the land behind us. That's the pasture, and beyond that is the tillable yeah. land. And so I don't know. It's a different it's a different way of living. Yeah. And um, I did not expect to have this part of our video. Yeah. Um, but yeah. In fact, we said, well, we're we're not going to we're not going to film anything there. Cause... Yeah. There's nothing to film. Right. But what we have. What's turned into is probably one of our best boondocking spots. Yeah, but it's it's not just it's just not the staying in the camper here and having a completely peaceful place to ourselves. It's it's everything else that's come come along with that. I mean, there's been work trying to get things cleaned up and straightened out. Yep. But um, we've had some major bonfires. We'll show you some pictures of that. Yeah. And just kind of getting rid of things. So yeah. anyway, uh, what a pleasant surprise uh, on our journey back to yeah. home. Yeah. And it's nice and warm, yeah. so we'll like that. It's beautiful. So. Uh, I guess we'll get back to picking up sticks. Yeah. So we're heading home. So we did have some um, fairly significant issues with the truck that caused uh, quite a bit of um, challenges for us, I would say. Angst. Angst, yes. Yeah. Frustration, um, anger. Anger, yeah. With the scope of that, um, rather than try and jam that into a little segment here, we're gonna, we're gonna probably break that down and talk a little more about um, what happened there and and, in another video. Yeah, in another video and the resolution of that. So, um, we'll cover that later. Yeah. So we're on our way home. Um, we've been away for six months. Um, so it's going to be good, good to get back and see the house again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we have had a, a really wonderful time in the sense that we haven't felt anxious to get home, like we're tired of what we're doing. And we haven't felt like discouraged that we're going home. No. We're, we're, we're no. glad to be home, go, heading home. So. We have left um, Oklahoma. We are heading north. We've got a long dr drive ahead of us, and um, but we'll be we'll be home in two days, and uh, from there we will be sharing another video. Tom's already to alluded to the fact that we'll do a we'll do a video on what happened with the truck, which is fun. But then we're also going to do a season wrap up of what was the season like, what did we learn from it, that kind of thing. We've got some ideas of uh some love it or leave it yes um things that we uh brought along that we maybe didn't need and or bought along the way and or bought along the way and didn't need um, and other stuff we're really glad we bought yeah exactly yeah so for now if you are enjoying following us on our adventures we encourage you to hit the subscribe button mm -hmm. and the notification button yep. or, so that and, and hit the like the like thumbs like up button, button if you want the to video. Um, also, if you have any questions for us about about our trip, about our six month journey from uh, through uh, the Southwest yep. that you'd like for us to cover in our wrap up video, yep. feel free to drop that into the uh, comments below. Yeah, the comments below. And uh, remember, there's other stuff that we've linked in the comments below, our harvest host link, that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, so join us again next time for our season wrap up. And, um, and it's some teasers about some stuff we might be doing this summer. Yep. Thanks for joining us.